more on the narcissists and funerals. And remember, as you're going through the narcissists and funerals playlist, even if you're not in a situation where a funeral is involved or a memorial or a celebration of life, you can still take heed to some of these behaviors that will go on. Okay, so narcissists and funerals, the motel stay, or in some cases you're at relatives or friends' homes that's in the state where the funeral was at, even if it is within the same state. You're in a motel, hotel, or at someone's home. So the people that you bring to support you, other relatives, other friends, in this case, we're going to say relatives. So you're paying for the trip. You've purchased the tickets. You're purchasing the food. You're pretty much providing the Ubers, there may be a family member that comes from out of town that rents a car that offers transportation, siblings, cousins, whomever, right? And you're very grateful for this. But the relative that you bring, this could be a, even a relative that speaks at the funeral. Remember, with narcissism, there's no empathy in the real sense of the word. So you being in a situation where you're burying your child, your uncle, your parents, grandparents, great friend, whomever you're burying. The narcissist does not care because a lot of times they're more than just a narcissist also. These are sociopaths or even potential psychopaths. So now is the time that you get to be called out your name. You the B word, you the N word. Now is the time. Why not do it that way? Why not add to your misery? Why not put you in a position where you got to say something toxic back or you got to defend yourself? Or in some cases, these situations can even lead to physical confrontations. So now you're in a motel out of town because the narcissist or the sociopath or psychopath then called you a B, called you the N word, called you the C word, the C word, I guess, um, I guess it was sort of the C or K called you a cunt. I mean, I'm just trying to be diverse here because there's a lot of words that other cultures use that may not be in my culture, right? So usually someone that's in my race or nationality, we don't too much use the cunt word. We'll mo more use the B word, the bitch word, right? So, or the N word or whatever, cunt, bitch, stanky hoe, heifer, um, cowboy looking motherfucker, whatever, just make up some shit, right? But at the end of the day, you're not going to get compassion when you're grieving. You're not going to get a hug saying, hey, what's going on? You all right? You just get caught that one good word. When you have asked this person to stop using a lot of profanity in front of other relatives, because a lot of times these are young adults, teenagers, I mean, even if this is a 30-year-old, you like, man, could you stop cussing so much around grandma and grandpa? You know, this could even be someone that's mature enough to know better, but now is the time. Now is the perfect time to call you out of your name and be thankful that it happens. So when you ain't going to a funeral and you on a family vacation or you're going on a trip, you don't take they ass back with you, okay? Because you got to remember, you got to start analyzing yourself. You paid for them to go. You paid for them to go with you. You had enough empathy. You thought they were important enough in the family to take they ass. And what did you get when you used your empathy? You got called out of your name. So you got to learn from this so that it does not proceed in the future. Because 
The narcissists don't give a fuck about you, right? They don't give a fuck about you or who you didn't bury, who you grieving over, none of that. So this is the time. And see, these situations kind of stand out because at this point you like, I done been around some cold ass people in my life, right? But damn, I ain't never been around somebody this cold. Like they'll call you the B N word, the, the cunt word. They'll call you these um, horrible ass names. And just saying it one time is too much in this situation. Don't, um, don't, what can, how can I say this? Don't minimize it. Yeah, don't minimize what they did. Just be aware of it and just have a plan going forward. This is not somebody that I need around me when I'm grieving or going through anything. Because the narcissist, sociopath, and psychopath, they're around to make your current situation worse. That's it. They're not around for nothing else. Half the time, they don't even want to be with your ass anyway, to be honest. Your empathy is the one that wanted them to go. They'll fake like they want to do shit, but in all reality, they don't want to go with you. So you paid all that money. By the way, on top of getting called out your name, the argument escalated to where you have missed your airline flight leaving. So you flying on this one particular effed up ass airline that charges you over $500 to rebook your flights to get back in the state where you're from. You done got called out your name. And all it is because of your empathy. Your empathy got you into this. Oh, you didn't want to leave them and not take them because they were named by the relative that passed away or the relative that got killed. They named this person, right? So your empathy is like, I got to take them. The person that passed away would not want me not to have this particular person go after all. She or he named this person. See, all of that got you called out your name. All of that niceness got you called out your name because you're too nice to the wrong people. And your empathetic traits of being kind and thinking about somebody it's never going to balance out or be on an equal two-way street when you're dealing with narcissists, sociopaths, and psychopaths. And a lot of narcissists, if they're just a narcissist, may have more self-control than this person that called you out of your name. But see, you taking psychopaths and sociopaths with you. And remember, all psychopaths and sociopaths are automatic narcissists. And so this is just the time, whether they calling you out of your name, saying rude stuff to you because they stressed out because they need to get back into the town they from, telling you move out of your way or whatever, because, you know, a lot of narcissistic people are under stress too, work related stress. They're trying to get back to their homes. They got stuff they got to do too. But when you're taking narcissistic people with you, they're not thinking about how you feel and what you may need emotionally during this time. Because these people have anger issues too. But see, even with an anger issue, it's just some stuff we ain't gonna say. I just ain't got the soul in me to call you out of your name when you just bury your relative. I just ain't got it in me. I just won't say nothing to you before I do you like that. But these people don't care. So create a new plan. It's already happened. You can't do nothing about it. If it ain't happened to you, if you're taking someone with you, or staying in a motel or hotel or home location with someone that's already shown an abusive, narcissistic, 
or narcissist, emotional, abusive attitude, if they've gotten physical with you, don't take the person. Because all you're doing is creating more chaos and making the relationship you have with them even worse. So if you ain't took them yet, don't take them. I don't care if they 17, 16, 18 years old. Find a babysitter or someone else they can stay with and don't take them with you. Because it's not going to be healthy for your grieving process. You are already burying and going through a relative that could be an immediate family member that you did love. You got to worry about and go through the grieving process. But then you taking this other sociopath that's a narcissist also with you or this psychopath that is also a narcissist automatically with you and you're going to get abused. So if you already know that they've already abused you in the home environment and in public, don't take them with you because it's guaranteed they don't have it in them, y'all. They don't have enough sense and logic and reasoning to not abuse you while you're going through this tough time. It just ain't in them. So you don't want to go somewhere and fly off the handle because you're grieving and you get a charge. Or you get so mad and you leave this individual in the state and you shred the airline ticket up and say, I'm not even taking you back with me. You don't want to go through none of those things or even have to think about those things you just want out of this situation so that's how it can go so don't put yourself through this be more strict and when i say be more strict you already know they're an abuser don't take abusers emotional and physical abusers don't pay money and take them on trips with you whether it be the funerals, vacations, don't take them with you. Just don't do it. They're not going to not be an emotional abuser or a physical abuser just because you're in another state with them. And I'm really focused on the emotional abuse because hopefully you got enough sense. And if you don't, you have enough sense now to not take somebody that'll hit you for real. If this person has repeatedly hit you and blacked your eye, knocked you down and beat you up, hopefully you know not to take them. However, some people may make that mistake, but they're definitely emotionally abusive. So don't do it. Don't put yourself through it. It's not worth it. It's just not worth it. You deserve to grieve and go through this situation without being treated like that. You can't change this person. It's not in him or her to do anything different. These are cold, soulless, unhappy, miserable, ain't got enough to do with their time, failures, don't want to educate themselves and meet their true potential because a lot of them are intelligent but they will continue to do dumb, dumb stuff to themselves and around people. That's dumb. When your relative or close friend is grieving and you call them a bitch, N-word or cunt or hillbilly shoe wearing, cowboy wearing motherfucker, whatever people be calling these people or calling these empathic people, it just ain't worth it, y'all. So this is what you're going to get. You're going to get called out of your name and you're not going to know which one is worse. Is it worse that I buried someone I love and went to the funeral service? Or is it worse that I just got called out of this name? Or I just got called out of my name. I apologize. So don't do it. When you know people are emotionally abusive, a lot of times you're already not in the same home environment anymore. But then that emotional thinking and that empathy, you start thinking about them. Where I know they're not in a home, but I don't want to leave them out of the family funeral and family trip or family vacation. Oh, I don't want to do that. 
They're going to use it against me. They're going to feel so left out. And all of that emotional thinking is going to get you emotionally abused and called out of your name. Don't make that mistake. Be more strict. People that abuse you or me or others, people that abuse you, stop paying money and taking them with you. Stop inviting them out places. You're just creating more and more conflict. That's all. And they're not going to respect you. They don't look at it like, well, this person kind to me. If they thought that way, you wouldn't be called the name. They're going to purposely make this the most ungodly, evil experience that you could think of. They're just there to do the devil's work. Torment, upset everybody, make everybody uncomfortable, be lazy, lay around, play on their bullshit ass Wi-Fi. They just there to upset everybody. If they young, they cussing around all their elders, cussing when you at the, the, the drive through to get you some donuts, just belligerent, wicked ass people. Don't do it, y'all. I apologize for the profanity, but I do like to make these videos interesting. I'm a full grown woman on this bike doing this video. I don't do a bunch of cussing. Most of my videos, I do not use profanity, but I use it here because I've gone through it. It don't feel good. And other people have gone through it too. Be careful. Please like, share, and subscribe. And your best bet is to not take them with you. Save yourself some money too, y'all. This is a thousand dollars, two thousand, three thousand, however much you spent getting this person there, covering Ubers or whatever. It's just not worth it, right? You're just taking your money and throwing it in the garbage can. You could have saved that money. They're not worth the money, right? Because they're never going to offer this to you. They're never going to cough up the money to take you nowhere and on no trip. These people ain't inviting you out to eat. They ain't bringing you no donuts. They have nothing to offer you. You're the only one offering them something. And that alone is enough reason not to take them, right? Just learn from it. If you ain't been through it, don't do it. If you have to or feel like you have to take this person, get them their own motel room so they're not in the same motel or hotel with you and make it a trip where you're just attending the funeral with them, but you're not in the same living quarters with them. If you just have to have this relative or close friend or adopted relative at this service. Do it a different way so that you don't go through what myself and others have gone through in these type of situations. Um, I'm on this bike, y'all, I've been on this bike for 18 minutes, almost 19 minutes. Please like, share, and subscribe. Love y'all so much. Thank you so much. Bye.